We acknowledge the Wadawan people as traditional custodians of this land. Clinton Springs Primary School belongs in her chart overlooking our bay. We enjoy spending our time living and learning on Wadawan country. Good afternoon, everyone. Salvation Army who have organised this. So, you've heard a little bit about NOVA already in class, is that correct? Yeah. All right, very good. So, I don't really need to do any more introduction except to hand over. So, can we give a big warm welcome to NOVA? Hey guys, so good to see you. Just wanted to quickly just say it um, before NOVA shares. Nova's come as, um, to help us out, the Salvation Army, out with the Youth Ambassador Program. And there's seven Youth Ambassadors in this room. And I was just wondering if you could quickly come up the front, because Nova is going to present you with your Youth Ambassador badges. So if you wanted to come up, here you go. So the Youth Ambassador Program is a 10-week program. And what's kind of already been decided it's, uh, is that these guys are going to look at how do we restore indigenous culture in the everyday life. And uh, these guys have all got some different ideas of how they're going to do that. But we thought, you know, rather than us, us white guys, try and tell people how to do indigenous stuff, because we don't know anything about it, we need to work with the professional indigenous people who know what they're talking about, so we can get out of the way. So these guys are going to be youth ambassadors, and over the next 10 weeks, going to work on a project to make a difference. So. We've got a little badge here. So if this is Jet. Yeah, yep. Yeah, there you go. And we got. Great. There you go. There you go. Sweet. Oh, I've got all these badges in my pocket. Hang on, here we go. Great. Great. And this one. Great. Great. Be a big round of applause. You guys can stand there if you want, or you can. No, no, um, it's so good that you're here. Um, the school is actually involved in a brand new initiative at the moment called Shine, which they like, they launched this week. Then the, the school has new values, so it's. Uh, does anyone remember the values? Respect, responsibility, and kindness. Nova, we know that you're a, a, an amazing woman. I don't know, is, does anyone know anything about Nova? A few things, but just one fact. Yeah? Anyone? Yep. 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 How about someone just call it out? She's an Olympian. She's an Olympian. 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 Olympic gold medalist. Yep. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Let me go and she's been in the Senate. Yeah, that's good. How did you know that? That's really good. Uh, excellent, guys. Thank you. That's it. So, Nova, you've been in all these amazing, prestigious um, positions in life. How important is respect, kindness, and what was the other one? Responsibility for you. responsibility and kindness. So it starts at a very young age. And so for me as a little kid to do, have big dreams and aspirations. So when I was nine years old, I wanted to go to the Olympic Games. And I guess for me with the respect and the responsibility, my responsibility, if I wanted to achieve something, I had to be responsible for my actions. And that was training, um, being responsible, um, to my coaches and to my parents and all the people that helped me to get to, to two Olympic Games in two different sports. 
I guess, um, the kindness. Like, my coach wouldn't want to coach me if I wasn't kind to my coach. Um, I wouldn't have been able to get a, a really good education if I wasn't responsible to get up every morning, put my school uniform on, and to go to school to get an education. And being kind to your teacher are really good values to have because your teacher is your educator and they're going to teach you all the wonderful things and it's good that you've got um, the ability now to learn more about Aboriginal culture and our history, which is fantastic because here in this country, there's, there's two lots, there's a, there's a new history which started 200 years ago and then there's our history which started 50,000 years ago. So it's good to be able to know the entire history of this country. So I guess for me, I travelled to 55 countries around the world with my sport. So I respect, I, 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 re, I represented Australia for 13 years. So do you think I could do that if I didn't have respect for my coaches, if I didn't have respect for my teammates? and if I didn't have kindness towards my teammates because they wouldn't have wanted me in their team. So what you're learning now, at a very young age, respect, kindness, responsibility. and responsibility, it's so good that you're learning these things at a very young age because even now, for me, I'm 49, I turned 49 couple, last week, I think it was, I still need those things, you still need to have respect for everybody around you because we all have to live together in a tight-knit community on this uh, continent. And I guess the responsibility too for us as Aboriginal people, see this t-shirt that I'm here? What's that say? Hill Country. So when we talk about responsibility, us as Aboriginal people, my ancestors have been here for 50,000 years and we have a responsibility to country, to heal it, to maintain it. But we do that in a way that we want everyone to benefit from it. And you know, like with all the fires that have been happening, a lot of people have said, we need to go back to the old ways, to how Aboriginal people lived for 50,000 years and how we cared for country and how we burnt country. because. Water and fire are the same thing. You wouldn't believe that, would you? You actually, you think by pouring water, things grow, but when we burn country, it does grow. You need both things. And this is what we as Aboriginal people can teach people, because fire and water are the one thing. So it's about respect, respecting us, respecting our knowledge, that we can teach everyone, like you're here at your school, you're learning from your teachers. And it's great that we've got these amazing young ambassadors. Um, you know, we're talking to, to Peter and the Salvation Army about what we can do across the road, about bringing, um, planting bush medicine and all these types of plants that we used to use for thousands and thousands of years. Because our knowledge will become your knowledge when we have mutual respect for each other. Great. That's great. Great. Thank you, Nova. And any other questions? Oh, the sport. So, so, so a few of you have seen that Nova was into sport, right? Yeah. What do we know about the sport? Like, what do we know? Shoot, an athletic person, yes. What else do we know? Oh, football. I actually did play football. I did. <laughs> and I shouldn't have been playing football because it was six months before the Olympic Games. And I was playing um, in a father-son. So I was the son that my father didn't have at that time, so I was playing football. Anyway, that's another story, but I did play football. Um, but I played lots of sports when I was young. And like I was saying before, when I was nine years old, I was watching the Olympics and I said to my mum that I wanted to go to the Olympics one day. Do you think that that was easy? Yeah. It's, it's very, very hard. If you want to be 
a really good sports person, you have to train really, really hard and you have to eat really, really well. So from a young age, I was, I was good at athletics, but you know what my, my mum and my dad used to say to me all the time? Education, 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 education. You need to go to school, you need to stay in school, and you need to stay in school to get a really good job. Because even though I, I represented Australia for 13 years, I could have got an injury. And sometimes injuries can end your career. And I was very lucky that I, I didn't get a long-term injury, but I was um, able to represent Australia for 13 years and travel to all those countries. What did you do? Well, in those 13 years? What? So, in the 13 years, I played hockey as a junior in the Australian under 80s, Australian under 21s. And then I made my first senior teams uh, in 1992. I played my first test match um, for Australia and Japan. And yeah, I played 97 games for Australia. I won a World Cup gold medal, three Champions Trophy gold medal, and an Olympic gold medal. And if anyone ever goes to Canberra, my Olympic gold medal is in the museum there. Apparently there's something on the medal. Yes. So if you ever see my medal in Canberra, if you look closely, you'll see a tooth mark in it. Because I bit it. I did. Because when I, well, they say that there's all this gold that's in this Olympic gold medal, and when it was put around my neck, I kissed the medal, and then I was like, I'm going to see if it is real gold, and I bit it, and so my tooth mark is in the gold medal. Fantastic. In, in, uh, in Canberra. But then what happened was when I finished playing hockey, I then changed sports. Does anyone know what my second sport was? Yeah. Yep, you, yep. Yes, it was athletics. So I, I, um, I ran at three world championships, I made the top 16 in the world. Um, ran an Olympic Games and I won two Commonwealth Games gold medals. So this year, what is it, what are the big sporting events that we've got this year? Yeah, but what's what's happening? A big sporting event. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Awesome. Do you want some questions? We got. It's time for two questions. So anyone got a? Oh, yeah. Ca Caleb. Yeah. What's your question? Of, 
um, for our well, sporting school captain. But uh, like I was saying, you know, sports is something that everyone should do. Because if you have a healthy body, you have a healthy mind. And that's one of the main reasons why my mum always wanted to push me and my sister to, to play sports, was so, so our bodies could be healthy. Oh, do you want to choose some? Hey, who's going to have a question? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, you. Yeah. What was the question? Why did you decide to be in Parliament? Oh, great well, question. That's a good question. So, Maybe tell us a bit about how that Yeah. Happened. Yeah, so when, when I was actually playing sports and representing Australia, I used to have a lot of questions about Aboriginal people and history and all these things. So even when I was a sports person, I was quite political on the things that I used to talk about. And so when I finished sports, when I retired in 2001, I got asked if I would go into Parliament a couple of years later. And I said no, because I didn't want to just go into Parliament not having a lot of knowledge. And so for a good 12 years after the first time I was asked, I did a lot. I travelled to 104 communities around Australia. I was passionate about education passionate about young people with health um, and a whole heap of other things and then when I was asked again would I go in I said yes because I went into Parliament because the Prime Minister at that time Julia Gillard asked me if I would go in and would I serve the people of the Northern Territory and so I said yes so when you go into Parliament I was very passionate about representing people in the Northern Territory and Aboriginal people to give them a voice so that that's why I went in and I served one term because I went out because I had young kids and my family needed me. Um, but I think I'll go back one day. But that was a very good question. Great. Yeah. So, one more. Yeah. One more. One more question. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you choose. You choose. Okay. <laughs> um, no, but because but this gold is really soft, and so that's why it sort of went off. Like, oh, shite, my tooth went in, and I looked at it and had a big tooth mark in my gold medal. <laughs> <laughs> Have you done any coaching, though? Oh, um, uh, look, because I'm so busy, it's really hard for me to coach, but I, um, if I can do group coaching, I do, but normally I just coach my son, Jack. So Jack um, has won five national titles over the 200-400. He could potentially make a world junior team this year um, as a 16-year-old running the under 20s. And he plays football. But apart from that, I do a lot of mentoring with people who, yeah, just trying to help them set their goals. But the coaching I do is just with my son because he listens to his mother. <laughs> That's yeah, yeah, listen to him. Okay, guys, thank you so much. Can we give Nova a big hand? And thank you for coming to Parker. About race. Uh, I know the response that Nova gave to her this question. Okay, do you want to. You go. You go. Was, just um, say that. Been very Oops, just Wiggle to your toes and keep looking at Nova. Mm, thank you. Now, what we were, um, Nova's been very generous with her time today, and she spent some time with the youth ambassadors, but she also spent time with our Koori and Torres Strait Islanders, and they all asked some very amazing questions, and some of you have asked the same questions, but. Hallie asked a very powerful question and Nova gave a very moving response, didn't she? And I think it's a good message for all of you who may have experienced some unkindness from other people and the importance of kindness. Do you want to ask your question again, Hallie? Uh, Repeat. Um, yeah, you know, that, that was a really good question, a great question. So, was I scared of right. racism? And I guess as a little kid growing up in Darwin, there was a lot of Aboriginal people, so 
there was small Aboriginal people and more people that were different. It was very multicultural. So I didn't have a lot of it growing up as a kid. But when I started to represent Australia and travel, I got called really, really nasty names. And that was really, really upsetting. A lot of people say, oh, sticks and stones can break your bones, but names will never hurt me. But names do hurt. And it's not very nice. And what I learned when I was in Parliament, um, I used to be racially abused almost every day. Because people would email me, they would ring up on the phone and say nasty things, they would write about me. And so for three years, almost every day or every second day, people were criticising me because of the colour of my skin and because I was a woman and an Aboriginal person. And then one day, I got called some really, really nasty names, and I had 30,000 Australians, and they, they wrote on this thing called change.org, it was like a petition. And this man who wrote nasty things about me being an Aboriginal person on Facebook, the police rang me and said, we've got 30,000 complaints how this man said nasty things to me and they said we're going to arrest him. So they went to his workplace and they arrested him and he tried to say that his Facebook was hacked into, which was a lie, and then he went to court. And when he was in court, he pleaded guilty. And he, he guilty means he admitted that he had done the wrong thing. And what happened was he got sentenced to eight months jail time because he called me some really, really nasty things. So here in Victoria, they have what they call fair play, which is a rule book for how kids play sports. And it's against the rules to say something nasty about someone's colour of their skin. You can't say things about their religion, whether they have different religious backgrounds or their different ethnicity, which means if you're you know, a Greek or Italian, you can't be discriminative or say racist things to that person because for those reasons. So the reason why that was a really good question is, I got it. And what I used to say to people is, we, if I was to cut my skin, what colour do you think my blood would be? Red. If Peter cuts his skin, what colour do you think his blood is? Red. Red. And right now, are we walking on the same place? Yes. Are we breathing the same air? Yes. <laughs> so, we share common things. The colour of our blood, the same earth, the same air. So we should be treating people equally. Mm. And not being racist towards people because being racist is against the rules. It's actually illegal to do that. So next time people think about that, you could be someone like Peter and Peter will say, hey, that's not cool to call someone names because we have to share the same common areas and it's about respecting each other. So I know that I had it and it's not very nice to be um, called names because of, of who you are on the outside. Yeah, good work. <laughs> well done. So I think Nova is a wonderful example of why we have Shine and why every student mm. and all of our staff members here at Clifton Springs Primary School Shine, okay? Mm -hmm. Along with the gold medal, that's sort of too far. It's very really soft shiny as well. But um, what, a, what a wonderful lifetime and a role model Nova has been. And can you join with me and thank her for sharing that and launching our Shine program?